Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Come to me, all you who are labored and are burdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. A certain Pharisee invited Jesus to dine with him, and he entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at table. Now there was a sinful woman in the city who learned that he was at table in the house of the Pharisee. Bringing an alabaster flask of ointment, she stood behind him at his feet weeping and began to bathe his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and anointed them with the ointment. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus said to him in reply, Simon, I have something to say to you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people were in debt to a certain creditor. One owed 500 days wages and the other owed 50. Since they were unable to repay the debt, he forgave it for both. Which of them will love him more? Simon said in reply, the one I suppose whose larger debt was forgiven. He said to him, you have judged rightly. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? When I entered your house, you did not give me water for my feet, but she's bathed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but she has, ce she has not ceased kissing my feet since the time I entered. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with ointment. So I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, hence she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. He said to her, your sins are forgiven. The others at table said to themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? But he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus. The Pharisees were very confused and rightly so, because only God can forgive sins. They didn't recognize the fact that Jesus is God. And yet, what happened in this reality is, at some point, Jesus died. And we see how he died. He was nailed to the cross. And he suffered a great deal, and he did that because he loves you. And then three days later, he rose from the dead. We can't rise from the dead by ourselves. Only God could do that. And so that's why we celebrate this great feast today, to, you know, this, the mass, that's why it becomes church, because God loves us so much that he died for us. And that rascally devil tricks us. He tricks us into doing stupid things. You've heard me say this before. Sin is stupid. I know that's a bad word. We shouldn't say it except in this context because sin really hurts us. And the reason why sin is so stupid is because it's bad for us. It hurts us. But yet that rascally devil tricks us into doing stupid things. Like being mean to our brothers and sisters or cheating or, or doing things that will really, elder, uh, really hurt us. But God loves us. And he will forgive us no matter what we do. The only thing that God cannot forgive is something that we don't ask for forgiveness for. If we don't think we're sinners, God's not going to forgive us. We have to know it. We have to ask God to forgive us for the dumb things that we do. That's why it's so important for us to understand God, know his commandments, know what he teaches, so that we can protect ourselves from ourselves. Again, sin hurts us. And God is that perfect father who wants us to live a life of joy and happiness and human thriving. 
but the devil tricks us into doing all kinds of stupid things. Today, we celebrate the feast of Robert Bellarmine. He lived, and I think he was the friend of a guy named Galileo. Have you ever heard of Galileo? I think he's the guy that discovered the telescope. Now, a lot of people don't know their history very well. Many people say the church condemned Galileo because of his science. That is ridiculous. And Robert Bellarmine is the perfect example of that because he told people, he said, hey, you know, if Galileo is right and the, the orbits are around the sun, we just need to understand that and understand the scriptures in light of that. And God will help us understand that. Because at this time, there were a lot of people that thought that the sun went around the earth. Now, there were other people, a priest actually, or at least a church guy, his name was Copernicus, and he lived before Galileo. And he had this idea that the sun was in the center and the earth went around the sun. But he didn't get in trouble. It could be that he was a little more humble or a little more prudent, whatever it might be, but Galileo thought he was the only one that could be right. And what's interesting about Galileo, he said the orbits were circles. Now, there was another guy called Kepler, and he said the orbits were elliptical. And Galileo, I think, said something like, well, they must be circles because circles are more perfect than ellipses. And God wouldn't have made something less perfect. Well, Galileo was wrong about that. <laughs> the orbits are elliptical. But the point I'm trying to make is a lot of people in our world will say that the church is against science. And it's not, not at all. In the Catholic church, faith and reason go totally together. If we use our brain really well, and we think well, it's only going to draw us closer to Jesus. But like when you guys grow up and you go to college, there's gonna be a lot of teachers that, that will mock the church and they'll say that the church doesn't honor science and they're just wrong. They don't know what they're talking about. So we have to pray for those people. We have to pray for those people who have been deceived, who don't understand the truth and the reality of what the church is, a church that was established by Jesus to save us, to guide us and help us know what is true, good, and beautiful. And this bishop, Robert Bellarmine, he was a, a bishop in the church and a doctor of the church, and he wrote, wrote just beautiful things. Because guys, if we don't realize that God has a place for us in heaven, then all the difficulties on earth don't make any sense. But God's got big plans for each and every one of you. So you've probably heard me say this, when you go to communion and thank Jesus for receiving Jesus, you thank God for receiving Jesus and giving him in the Eucharist. Try and always remember, say, God, let me do whatever you want me to do. Because if we do what God wants, we'll be really happy. It's just that simple, but we need to listen. We need to pay attention. We need to exercise what's called discipline. We need to be disciples. You know what the word in Latin disciple comes from? It comes from student. A disciple of Jesus is a student of Jesus. We need to study hard and know who Jesus is and give our life to him because he wants us to be happy. And if we do that, we will be happy. And not only that, but by sharing this good news, you'll make other people happy too. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We stand as we bring our prayers of intercession before the Lord. We pray for the church, that she may be a light to the nations and a guide to all peoples, we pray to the Lord for all nations throughout the world, that they may know and serve the common good and not be motivated by greed and self-interest, we pray to the Lord. For Martha Polarski, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. For more vocations to the priesthood, religious life, faith-filled marriages, and the dedicated single life, we pray to the Lord. For an end of this wretched pandemic, we pray to the Lord. For all our healthcare professionals, first responders, police officers, all those people that strive to make society healthy and stable and safe, that God will protect them and encourage them to do the right thing 
in all circumstances and situations, we pray to the Lord. And indeed, let us pray for an end of racism, the illogical position where people hate just because of someone's color or their beliefs, that we might be people to help others recognize their infinite dignity, we pray to the Lord. That all corruption be uncovered and those responsible for it lose their power and be replaced by leaders who respect life, religious liberty, and all that's in accord with natural law, we pray to the Lord. And that all of us work really hard to know Jesus and in, let him be our master and ruler in our lives and in our, in our homes, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. <clears throat> 